Good morning, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming to today's uh, webinar, or I'm sorry, online meetup. Um, we are stoked to be here. So my name is Patricia Dugan. I am the Director of Community Marketing over at Traffic. And um, let me tell you what's going on here. So we have the Traffic Online Meetups, and what Traffic Online Meetups are is they are uh, sessions with engineers, um, that help to show you how traffic's being used to solve interesting business problems or challenges, shall we say. Um, I have to tell you we have exciting news and you may have heard about this on our Slack channel um, that we have introduced a new community forum. I will place this into the chat box. Um, and what this is, is a, clearly a community forum. It's on discourse. It's the place for you to put your questions, get support, uh, learn about um, upcoming online meetups and events we'll be at, and just general announcements like our releases um, and bug fixes, su such things such as this. It's early here in San Francisco. Um, so today we are super stoked to hang out with at I do my own tricks on Twitter, AKA Brian Christener, who is on line with us from Switzerland, uh, his company 56 cloud. He's gonna, most of you know him as a Docker captain um, and online celebrity. And so we're super stoked to have him here. He's going to speak to deploy, configure and monitor traffic with Prometheus and Grafana. Um, Upcoming in July, we're going to have Jakob Hajek of Komitari talk about container orchestration with traffic on Docker Swarm. That should be pretty cool too. And that will be in the forum. So you could head over there to find out about that. Uh, so one thing I really want you to know, um, to know is that um, we're going to take questions and answers during today's session. And so what you wanna do is please enter your questions on the chat box or you can use the Q&A module if that serves you better. Um, and ask your questions and then we'll answer them at the end. And you can also direct message me if you need to. Uh, what else do I wanna tell you? Find us on Twitter at traffic and hashtag traffic. I'm Patricia underscore Dugan. Um, and if you need me, ping me at my email or on direct message here. Uh, my email is Patricia at Contanus, um, C-O-N-T-A-N-I-N-O dot U-S. Um, and with that, I think you have everything you need to have an exciting, wonderful session today. So I'm going to pass the microphone over to Brian. All right, microphone taken. Thank you. Thank you, Patricia. Welcome, everyone. I hope everyone's doing well today. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Let's get this started, shall we? All right. And there we go. Is everyone seeing my screen all right? Good, so let's get started. Deploy, configure, and monitor traffic with Prometheus and Grafana. Today's session, we're gonna focus on a little bit about the monitoring, so why we should monitor, as well as how to deploy traffic in a configuration to actually uh, to work with Prometheus and Grafana. So we wanna enable the metrics and traffic, we wanna measure it and store it in Prometheus and visualize it with Grafana. Sound good? All right, let me get the right screen. There we go. So my name is Brian Christner. Um, you can find me online at I Do My Own Tricks. You can contact me, brian at 56k.cloud. I am a SRE and co-founder of a company called 56k.cloud. We're a DevOps boutique station here in Switzerland, based out of Switzerland, and we are a large company of five, and we're expanding to six actually next week. And we're very excited. My background is actually in containers, cloud and engineering. And these actually tie quite well together because in today's world, you're mixing a lot of these different uh, technologies and you're, we're using more cloud. We're taking a lot of the engineering experience we've had in the past and we're actually combining a lot of these things. I'm um, also used to do a lot of cloud architecture for large deployments, casinos, uh, large operations and telecommunication providers. Also quite passionate about DevOps, uh, not only as DevOps, but as a culture and trying to push this change into companies and help them transition. Monitoring, of course, I've been monitoring everything as much as I can for a very long time, even before containers. And then of course, mountain biking. I'm a passionate mountain biker. 
I'm also a Docker captain. For people that don't know, a Docker captain is an ambassador for Docker. So I'm doing like sessions like this. I do blog posts. I do a lot of open source work. And that's just where I am. So enough about me, just quickly about our company, 56k.cloud. Like I said, we're based here in Switzerland. This is actually my colleague behind me here, Dara. And <laughs> he's waving. And this is him at the top of the Swiss Alps. And he's actually doing Docker pools at the top of the Swiss Alps. And the, the exercise here is we're proving to companies that we can actually do things better outside the office than inside. So evil corporate proxies and things like this. We're trying to get away from and prove that, hey, you know, we can actually enable people wherever they are. We specialize in cloud, obviously. Containers, because he's actually doing Docker pools at the top of the Alps faster than most people's offices. And of course, we're combining the tech between these two things. So we're doing containers and cloud. Let me just check to make sure questions are okay. Um, thank you. Okay, just want to make sure everybody doesn't have any problems with the session. Good. Next slide. So monitor everything. As I mentioned before, I am extremely passionate about monitoring. And typically when people talk about monitoring, they always think about it from an infrastructure point of view. And we shouldn't limit ourselves to just infrastructure. We should expand this out to also you know, things and physical objects, and we just keep going. So monitoring should really encompass everything around us. For example, mountain biking. I'm an avid mountain biker, so this is actually my mountain bike here in the middle. And I'm also a tech guy, like an engineered, as uh, Patricia mentioned earlier. And <laughs> it's, so I strapped a computer to my bike. So I have a GPS, tells me temperature, heading, direction, uh, elevation, heart rate, tells me how scared I am when I'm going down the mountain because I have the heart sensor, also crank speed, all these things. So I have a computer and it's providing all these metrics to me. Now I take this information and I import it into a program called Strava. Strava is like an online tool for uh, sports where you can track your, your different segments versus other athletes. Well, you notice here's a ride I did not so long ago and I became king of the mountain. So fast and loose. And that actually means that I became the fastest in this section. And again, I want to iterate that I'm taking the same concepts we're using in cloud and applying it to mountain biking and metrics and monitoring. So this segment right here is called fast and loose. And what happens is I iterated, I found out where my competitor was faster than me. And I found out how to go faster through these sections and I was able to actually go faster and became king of the mountain. And here's the real time split. So you can see myself and Danny Mendler. Danny Mindler at the end actually clipped me at the end and that is now the new king of the mountain. So you know what I'll be doing this summer. I'll be chasing Danny Mindler through the mountains trying to get my king of the mountain back. But again, coming back to it, it's about measuring small iterations and continuing improvement. Just like we do in the cloud, I'm applying it also to mountain biking. All right, so enough of mountain biking. We want to talk about tech, right? So give me a real business example. How about this? In Switzerland, we have a a company here is called Digitech. Digitech is our, you know, our Amazon for Switzerland. They sell all sorts of uh, electronic devices and do all sorts of things online, e-commerce shop. Now, Black Friday, also here in Switzerland, they went down for four minutes. And this is actually their Grafana graph you see here. And you can see the CPU going crazy and also it just drops off. That's not good on Black Friday, right? I mean, you can see they received 12,502 errors. I mean, 400 people couldn't get their deal. Now, without monitoring, we wouldn't visualize this for one. On the other hand, they repaired a production outage in four minutes. How many people can say that? How many people can like say, hey, I have a major e-commerce platform and I was able to recover within four minutes? And that's where monitoring really gets interesting because we're able to predict our failure conditions. We know what we're looking for and that's what's enabling us with monitoring. So monitoring is a really important tool that we can actually use to recover from errors like this. But if we don't have monitoring, we don't have the visibility into situations like this. All right, so how do we monitor traffic with Prometheus? Now, before I start this section, I mean, we as 56K use traffic quite a bit from, you know, uh, government organizations to startups to a bunch of different tools. So it, it applies to all sorts of different use cases. But for each of these use cases, we monitor, obviously. So 
In this particular case, we're going to use Docker Swarm. So on the left, we have Docker Swarm. And here, just normal Docker Swarm has containers. And we're exposing the endpoint to Prometheus. So Prometheus is our time series database. And it actually scrapes the Docker Swarm and gets all the information about Docker Swarm. On top of Prometheus, we have Grafana. Grafana is an open source visualization tool. So we can build some dashboards and actually visualize you know, what's happening inside our Swarm. Now we add traffic into the mix and you can see we have here, we have our dashboard. So the dashboard for traffic. If, you're, if you've deployed traffic before, you'll see a nice UI in the background and it gives you statistics about you know, front end versus back end and some real time information. We're also gonna deploy Grafana in this configuration. So grafana.localhost. And what this is, we're telling traffic that we wanna provision Grafana and actually give it this localhost domain name. Same goes for Prometheus. And then we're going through traffic and we're connecting it to the backends. So we can see backend Grafana, backend Prometheus, whatever other web servers we have. And of course, we're gonna deploy a cat server as well in this demo so we can see how it works in non-monitoring uh, applications. So this is what the, the stack looks like now. We have our Docker Swarm. However, traffic is talking to Docker Swarm. It's actually monitoring the daemon within Docker Swarm. So anytime a new container starts, traffic is aware about it and it registers it within its uh, internal registry saying, okay, I know that there's new containers started. It is yes or no wanting to be exposed. And does it have metrics? Next, um, traffic also talks to Grafana. So, and this is our Prometheus, excuse me. So we can see traffic actually exposes metrics and it provides it to Prometheus. Now Prometheus also talks back to traffic. So this is one of the bi-directional situations. And we'll see more of it when we actually deploy the stack. Now traffic also handles Grafana. So it actually provisions Grafana, handles the domain name, et cetera. And same for Prometheus. And I, I didn't set up any alerts for this demo, but if we had alerts set up, we can actually send alerts to Slack or messaging or email as well. Okay, enough slides. Let's get into the actual repo. And you can actually follow along because it's a open source repo. So head over to github.com forward slash Vegas Brian C forward slash Docker minus traffic minus Prometheus. I realize after the fact I made it way too long, but that's how it is. So this repo, I'll wait a minute so everyone has a chance to write it down or see it. It's basically the entire monitoring stack. So it has our Docker Swarm, it has, it has the containers, it has Prometheus, Grafana, it has also traffic, and it has all these components built inside. And we'll walk through each of these components here in a moment. Okay, I think everyone has time to read it. Any questions so far? No, nope. cool, okay. All right, so I'm gonna open this up in a new Chrome browser. And here's the repo. Let me make it slightly bigger just in case. And we can see we have different components. We have Docker Compose for actually Docker Swarm. So in order to provision, uh, let me move over here so I look at you, huh? Yep. Okay, so let me change my desktop so it makes it look like I'm looking at you, huh? Instead of looking off into the distance. And now I need to change my sharing to desktop one. Yeah. Okay, move this out of the way, this, good. You like the sound effects? All right, so we have our repo sitting here. And now in order for this repo to actually work, we, actually, we need Docker and Docker Swarm installed. If you wanna know how to use it, this is how you set up Swarm. If you're using Docker for desktop, for Mac, for Windows, uh, this enables Swarm by default. So you should have Swarm running already. Now this, if you're running Windows, you need to run Linux containers because these are all Linux components in this particular setup. And all the slides, if you're interested, are here. So whatever you saw earlier, you can also have the PDF in that link there. Okay, so if we scroll down slightly, we can see the goals is to provision a traffic stack with Prometheus metrics enabled, deploy Prometheus and Grafana, verify traffic metrics, and then we're gonna configure some dashboards in Grafana. And I'm going to open up 
my terminal and we're gonna start looking at the stack, shall we? Okay, let me pull this over. I'll make it slightly bigger. So if you were to clone this repo, this is what you would see. You would see, you know, the PDF, you see Docker Compose and Grafana Prometheus. So let's just take a look at each component separately so we understand what's going on. First thing we're gonna look at is docker-compose.yaml. We're gonna open this up. Oops, my scrolling goes off the page here. And the first thing in the Docker Swarm file or Compose file, we need to identify each service. So the first service is traffic and I pinned the version to 1.7 Alpine. And then we're passing the command to it that we wanna actually debug we want to set the log level to debug. We want to enable the API, which also enables the dashboard. The metrics. So here is where actually we turn the metrics on in traffic. It's not turned on by default for your, for your information. And the next line actually tells the metrics what kind of metrics we want. So we want to enable Prometheus metrics. And we have to tell what kind of buckets we want from Prometheus. And these buckets are actually like a time slot. So that's 0 0.1 seconds, 0 0.3, 1.2, 5.0. And basically what this means is if a metric comes in and it's the duration was 0 0.1 seconds, it falls into this bucket and that's how we query it. That's how the Prometheus side works, time series. Next, we need to tell traffic that we wanna use Docker, swarm mode, and finally, we're gonna pass a domain to it. And since we're running it locally, I don't have Let's Encrypt installed, so we're running everything locally and we're gonna pass docker.localhost. The next label actually tells um, traffic to watch the Docker daemon in case any new containers come along. So if a new container starts or a new service, automatically register it with traffic and decide if you wanna publish it or not. Next up, we have two networks and I, I like to separate the networks. This is just personal preference, but we have traffic and this is really our public network. So that's inbound, outbound. And that's really where uh, ingress traffic comes in. So anyone wanting to access my web server would come in from traffic. And then I have inbound, and this goes to each service individually. So from Grafana and Prometheus, that's how it talks to traffic. And then traffic talks out to the internet through this network. Then we mount traffic to the Dr. Damon. I publish port 8443 for any requests coming into our web services that way. And then port 8080 is actually for our dashboard. If we scroll down some more, you can see this is all swarm specific, but compose is relatively the same as well. So we're gonna deploy it, global mode, and we only want it running on the manager node of Docker Swarms. So if you're running this, make sure you're on the manager node. Uh, restart conditions, etc. Then we get down to Prometheus. And now Prometheus, this is basically a standard configuration. So we're using the standard Prometheus image. These are fairly standard uh, configuration files. Here's our inbound network, but right here is where it gets interesting. So the deploy section is where traffic uh, reads this information and realizes how to register it into uh, traffic. For example, we pass traffic front end rule, and this is where traffic assigns this container, this service, this domain name and we give it a back end. So we match the front end to actually a container. So this is the domain, and this is actually the container we wanna connect it to. Uh, the container is publishing port 9090, and we wanna give the inbound network access to this. And again, we're running it on a manager, but if it's a real situation, this would actually be a worker, but for the demo, since I only have one node, I keep it a manager. We scroll down, we look at Grafana, um, this is also a pretty standard config. Uh, in the environment file here, there's some special things and I'll kind of walk through it. And also here, so Grafana provisioning, and this is where you can auto provision dashboards, uh, data sources, you know, user credentials, all these things, this is quite cool. So you can actually get bootstrap your Grafana instance. Next up, environment variable. So this is where we pass in our username password for Grafana. Uh, networks, so inbound network, user that's gonna run Grafana, and then the traffic label. Similar to Prometheus before, we're gonna give it a domain, so Grafana.localhost, and a backend that it's gonna talk to. So it's gonna talk to the Grafana container using port 3000 and inbound. So, so far, 
that is our compose file. I'll quickly go into Grafana directory just to show you what it looks like. Uh, let's cat the config monitoring quickly. So you can see we set our very secure password foobar, username admin, and then I install some plugins also for the dashboard. Uh, let's see, then if I go into provisioning, you can see this is how I provision dashboards. Oops, CD dashboards. If I can, there we go. Let me clear. So I have a dashboard YAML, and this is basically defining what's happening inside the dashboards. So we are going to provide just default. We have one organization. We can define this out, but this is just all standard. So, and the last thing is where it's going to store these dashboards in the container. This is default, but you still need to understand how this works if you ever want to change or you want to automate uh, dashboard provisioning. Uh, let's see, clear. So then we have the actual dashboard here and it's quite large, but I'll just show you what it looks like. And you can see these are the different actually graphs and metrics that you see within the dashboard. And I'll show you a trick how to get that easily in. So that's the dashboard part and also the data source part is here, data source. I see a question, one second. In the data source here, we're gonna say we're connecting Grafana to Prometheus. That's how we connect to Prometheus, prometheus.localhost. We can actually do it a separate way as well. And this is how we connect through the different authentication to the servers. So that's just quickly how Grafana is used. And let me back up now to my root directory here, then I'll clear out of here. All right, let me just answer questions quickly and please ask questions because I'm more than happy. All right, here we go. Oh, thank you for putting the link in there, Patricia. So we have one question. Yes, you mentioned your prom Grafana would normally be node equals worker deployments. For the demo, it's just on the manager. Why is it necessary to add a constraint for them? Doesn't Swarm, uh, Swarm handle this automatically? Well, um, the question, so if I come back here to the Docker Compose file, you can see I have this constraint here to lock it into the manager. And typically, in a real situation, you would have your monitoring on a separate infrastructure or a separate node from your workload. So it doesn't affect your workload. And Swarm, if you, you took this out, Swarm would provision it automatically and actually uh, deploy it on any available node. But for, for this use case, since we only have one node, I kept it on manager. But in the real world, you want to try to dedicate it to a specific node or a group of nodes, which are kind of you know, reserved just for the monitoring. Okay. Yep, that's the link. So Vegas Privacy Draft Prometheus. All right, so next we are gonna deploy this. So if we go back to our destructions here, so we cloned in, we cloned the repo, already done. We CD'd into the traffic Prometheus. We kind of reviewed what's happening, how Grafon is used. Now we want to deploy it. So in this directory, all we need to do is write this command, docker stack deploy minus C. So what compose file, that compose file, we need to name the stack. And let's do that, right? Let me move this up, docker stack deploy minus C, and we'll call this traffic. And as you see, it's creating the inbound network, it's creating the network traffic, uh, the services, it's also creating volumes in the background, so it's doing all these things automatically. Now, if we do docker service ls, we should see all our services online. So traffic, it is running, we have one out of one replicas, Prometheus and traffic. So everything is now online. Happy days. You know, in DevOps world, we're going home now. It's time to go ride our mountain bike. But we're not done yet. We're still doing dev and ops, right? The next thing we're going to do, let me move this out of the way. Okay. So now everything is up and running and it's running a local host. So if I go local host and I go port 8080, this is now my traffic dashboard. So this is port 88, which we exposed just for the dashboard. And you can see Grafana, grafana.localhost 
is mapped to back in Grafana. So that's actually the IP of the container and the port of the, of the container running. Below is Prometheus.localhost and same thing. It's mapping to this particular IP and port of the container. If we click on health, here's real-time statistics. Oh, there we go. I'm not getting real-time statistics, but that's just, uh, it was working when I showed uh, Patricia a moment ago. But anyway, this is where you get real-time statistics. It normally works, but I'm sure it's something with my demo. But what's interesting here is the response time, and we want to see uptime, and you can see average response time. But again, this is real-time information, so if you miss it, it's gone. And that's why we want to store it in Prometheus. We want to store it in and visualize it in Grafana so we can see it over a period of time. I'm glad you asked. So now we're going to go into Prometheus. So Prometheus.localhost. And here we have Prometheus up and running. And we can go search status and targets. And you can see now we're monitoring both Prometheus and traffic. And now what's interesting, you see, this is the IP of traffic forward slash metrics. So if we come back here and go get that metrics, here's the raw metrics that traffic is producing for Prometheus. So Prometheus is actually scraping this information and storing it in this database. And this is real time information. And this is basically exactly what we're getting into uh, Prometheus. So you can see backend requests, you know, here's the different buckets, 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 1.2, and configuration reloads. So it's all the raw data in there. So if you want to script something out, if you want to use this information separately, that's how you do it. So uh, traffic, port number, forward slash metrics. Anyway, we're up and running. Now we can come over to the graph. And the graph automatically, if we scroll all the way to the bottom, we can see all the traffic metrics get pulled into Prometheus automatically. So instantly we can go, let's see, back in open connections. We don't have any there. Let's find something that's working. There we go. So back in request duration second count. You can see here's uh, Prometheus and you can see 200 codes. We have 10 and we have 302 of one. And we can click on the graph as well and you can see it visualized how it's working. So you can just run through the different queries and you can see request total, duration, and you can see per IP, et cetera. So it's really handy to actually see this information, but Prometheus, I mean, it's very, very good for storing the information. It's also uh, good for writing queries here but for visualization, for like really graphing and having a nice dashboard, this is where Grafana comes in. And that's why Grafana and Prometheus are so tightly coupled because Grafana wants to focus just on collecting the metrics and writing queries where Grafana wants to focus on visualization. So if we head over to grafana.localhost, and da, 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 da. there we go. And Username is admin, password is foobar, you know, very enterprise uh, secure here. And right away, you can see we install Grafana check, we created our first data source and our first dashboard. These three steps were done by the auto provisioning. So we don't have to do anything manually. And that's what I kind of walked through at the very beginning. If you head over to data sources, you can see Prometheus and that's how it connects. So that's that. We head back to home and we do the drop down. We can see we have a dashboard there, traffic two. And there you go. So we automatically imported this dashboard. And I'm going to actually do the last five minutes. There we go. Because we're only up and running a few minutes, so we don't have much information. And that's why you're only seeing a little bit. But you see response time, you're seeing, you know, which backend is being requested, what kind of status codes, if I'm getting other status codes from 200, and what kind of protocols are hitting it. So if it's HTTPS or HTTP. We can also choose which backend. So you can go to Prometheus, and you can see Prometheus has a bit more information. So you can see quite some information here. I mean, it's really helpful. And 
if we come back over to cats, we don't have anything at cats yet. But this is how you get up and running with the dashboard. So provisioning a traffic dashboard. If you want to add more, I'll show you in a moment. But this is basically, you know, from doing one command, you have traffic installed. It's doing your reverse proxying to Grafana and Prometheus. And we have a dashboard up and running, which we can start visualizing the information. But I'm glad you asked. Um, there's no real information there yet, right? So, I mean, we're only looking at, we're monitoring the monitor, right? We're monitoring Prometheus, we're monitoring Grafana. It's not really interesting information. At the very bottom down here, if we go down to deploy a new web service, I created a separate stack from a fellow Docker captain. Uh, oops. That's right. And it's this cat's YAML. So if we cat the cat YAML, we get it. We can see it's a small service. We create a cat application. It's by Mike, which is a Docker captain, really good guy out of Virginia Tech. Um, then we have the network inbound. We're deploying it. We're going to deploy three instances of it. And then we're going to name the domain cats localhost. The back end is cats. It's publishing port 5000. And we're going to use the inbound. Oops. So just as we did before, we're going to do Docker stack deploy minus C cats. And we'll call it cats. And you see it's creating the services. It takes a second because it has to deploy three services. So service LS. And you can see now I have three cats apps deployed. It's amazing. I know. It's really cool. So now we can head over to cats.localhost. And now it's pulling the cat gif random generator. So every time I refresh, I get a different cat, which is really cool. But it's also reverse proxying. So we can see it's being served by a different container every time uh, we refresh. So you can see container ID, container ID. So it's actually rotating through the containers every time we refresh. Pretty cool, right? Now, if we head back over to Grafana, so now we have some traffic, we refresh, we're seeing, wow, we're getting some more information going on here. If we go to the back end cats, uh, let me refresh a couple of times. We're starting to see some information from cats. We only have, we can only go down to five minutes. So you see 12 milliseconds, you're seeing all sorts of requests come in, you know, the response time, you know, if we're getting any 404s, it's getting quite interesting. And also it tells us right away, we have three backends. And if we have different endpoints, we can go HTTP. We just want to see HTTP, for example, or we just want to see traffic endpoint. So it, it provides a lot of great information and it's very basic, but it's uh, very powerful. And this is just the traffic monitoring. So you can imagine like taking this a step further and uh, monitoring inside the cat's container through traffic and getting the whole visibility or the observability as they say. Now, if we want to expand our Grafana slightly, so that's up and running with traffic. You know, now we have, if we go back to our dashboard, we can see we now have our cats.localhost and it's going to back in cats and there's three different containers running. Oh, now it's working. And you can see the different status codes. You can see average response time. So it's doing all right. I mean, it's working as advertised, which is good. All right. But say, for instance, we want to import another Grafana dashboard, right? Instead of writing it ourselves, I mean, we can kind of dive into one of these specific dashboards. So if we go just click on the title bar here, go edit. And this is how you write the query. So what I normally do is write the query in Prometheus, and then I just drop it in here and you can then work on what kind of visualization you want. That's one way to do it. You can also write the queries here, but it's a quick and easy way to get up and running. Another way to kind of easily get dashboards is you go to grafana.org, right? .org forward slash dashboards. Very good. And then we just come down here, we call traffic. So here's all the dashboards just for traffic, right? And I use Thomas's dashboard up here. I also have a dashboard. Um, let's just pick 
someone that's not me. I think Marcos is pretty good. And this is the dashboard that he, Marcos made, quite interesting. But all we have to do is, is take this ID numbers, 2240. We come back to our Grafana dashboard. We hit the plus, we go import. We just give it the ID number, load. And it automatically loads this dashboard in. We just have to tell it what data source, import, and there we go. We have a second traffic dashboard running. So now we have two traffic dashboards very quickly. And it's very powerful. I mean, again, you can, I, I typically recommend people going out looking at, you know, various open source dashboards available and Grafana. Uh, GitLab also has some great ones. I think it's a monitor. No, not that one. What's it? GitLab. Dashboards at gitlab.com. So GitLab is like a DevOps tool. They actually publish all their dashboards online. So you can see every dashboard that GitLab uses. So if you go down like this, uh, I don't know. I saw traffic somewhere. No traffic generation. Anyway, if, if they had uh, their traffic dashboard enabled, let's just pick a different one. Let's just put GitLab triage. As an example, so if you find a cool dashboard running on the internet somewhere, you can click the share dashboard button. You can export it and you can save it. And then you can just import it into your Grafana. So again, don't start from scratch. It's very, very easy to uh, use someone else's or follow someone else's dashboards and kind of adjust it to your needs. Start small because you don't want to over, uh, you don't want too many requests going on. You don't want thousands of tiles because it's really heavy on your server. So, you know, start with like six, six or eight is what I recommend. So eight or six different tiles. And from there you can actually, oh, I see Michael Irwin just joined. I was actually using your cat's demo. Cool. Anyway, um, it's actually right here, wherever it is. There you go, Mike. Cats.localhost. I'll publish it later. So that's just a quick rundown of why we want to monitor traffic, right? So it's very important that we monitor traffic to get the information, to get the metrics, to provide visibility into our infrastructure. And traffic out of the box does such a great job of giving us this information. We can, just with the single dashboard, we can already tell, you know, okay, the containers are online, if we start getting a lot of 404s here, we know right away, hey, maybe our service is offline, we're having some degradation, degradation somewhere. If our response time going up, maybe network congestion. So just a single dashboard alone, it's very useful. I use this dashboard quite often, so I can recommend it. But uh, that is kind of the demo for Docker Traffic Prometheus. Um, if you have questions, now would be a great time to put them in the chat or direct message or however you like to see. So I'll kind of open the floor up to questions if anyone has any. Yeah, Michael, I don't see any coming in, but could we um, maybe introduce, uh, I'm sorry, could, <laughs> Brian, um, could we maybe introduce Michael a little bit more since he's here in the room? He can't speak, so I have to speak for him, I guess, huh? Or... Yeah. Well, I could let him. I have all the power here. No. <laughs> I don't know. I would let him introduce I'll himself. Him because... talk. Let's allow him to talk. Let's see what there happens. Hey, look at that. Oops, that Michael, was... are you cool with this? I forgot to ask. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine with it. <laughs> On the spot, I know Mike, but hey. Uh, I know. So. But, uh, yeah, Mike is a fellow Docker captain. He's based out of Virginia Tech doing some amazing projects. Uh, he's also using traffic, as far as I understand, for some of your projects. And I know you yeah. built some open source tools around it too. Yeah, we're, we're doing definitely quite a bit with it uh, locally and, and for development and all that kind of stuff too. And uh, hoping to do a webinar here, here soon with uh, Patricia and, and the team. So we'll be sharing some of the stuff we're doing here in the future too. Yeah, super cool. Thank you. Um, yeah, I look forward to that. And uh, thanks for dropping by um, and being willing. Well, thanks for letting me put you on the spot there. Um, I shared their Twitter in the chat box. So if you're on Twitter, please follow them. 
we do have a question um, from Eric Stumbo. Eric, thank you for joining us. Uh, his question is, his question is, how do you push to Slack from there with Prometheus? Aha, uh -huh. so how do you make like alerting with Prometheus, et cetera? And I just set this up today for another customer so I can actually walk you through it. Um, if in Prometheus you have something, so in the same directory, I don't have it enabled, but it's the, the folder structures there. And one of my other projects, um, if you go to, I hate to kind of jump around here, but I have another project called Vegas Brian C Prometheus. And in here is every component around Prometheus enabled. So we have alert manager, it's connected to Slack. So if you go into alert manager, config, you can see that in here, you'd actually tell every alert to go to Slack. Here's the username, the channel, and the API from Slack that you want to use. So every time you get an event, say traffic gets to 404, you can send it to Slack, for example. And you would write that into an alert within Prometheus. Very powerful, give that a try. I mean, it's I, we use it quite often for a lot of our customers. Is uh, when you at the whole channel that the system's down, people tend to notice. <laughs> yeah, at channel. Um, first, first way to get on people's nerves. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's beautiful. Was there anything more you wanted to say about that, Brian? No, I mean, I, I have some mon other monitoring projects on my GitHub repo, so please check it out. Uh, there's also some Docker training out there, some Kubernetes training. We're also including, um, if you go to our 56K repo, 56K, there's actually a logging and monitoring workshop that I did at DockerCon. If you go to DockerCon, uh, and where is it at? Yeah. So this is actually the Docker con logging and monitoring workshop that I gave in San Francisco. And this is actually using swarm. So swarm and traffic. So we're provisioning, you know, traffic, we're introducing errors, we're looking for how to fix the errors and it's all here. So it's all the content is there in case you're interested to continue on the logging and monitoring. Sorry. With, yeah, I'll do that now. Thanks. So. It just makes it easy peasy for peeps. All right. And please, I mean, follow me on Twitter, shoot me questions, email, however you feel comfortable. Um, I'm always happy to like encourage the community to use these tools because I'm really passionate about it. Mike is also available. I mean, follow him on Twitter. He's also quite interesting. Has some cool projects running and yeah, I'll hand it back to Patricia. Well, I just had one more question come in, which is uh, when do you use alerts through Prometheus versus in Grafana? That's a good one. That's a very good one. So Grafana has its own alerting and you can actually, I don't have a good example here, but I prefer to do my alerting in Prometheus because it's more powerful. And the reason being, for example, if the backend goes down um, or the response time goes up, you can actually measure the response time and say if it hits 10 milliseconds to restart the container as an example, right? And you have all these integrations directly in inside of Prometheus. And that's how you really write some powerful rules. You can actually auto scale your environment with these rules. I mean, that's how Google manages their environment, et cetera. And then on the other side, if you look at the Grafana alerts, you can combine the alerts that you're receiving from Prometheus into Grafana. So you can actually, you know, add a channel. You can say, send emails from here from Grafana, and what happens is, actually, I think I have an example. I always have an example. This is my playground. Uh, let's see, let me find a good example here, system status. So here's some Grafana alerts, and what's handy is, this is actually Prometheus alerts combined with Grafana alerts, so I can actually click on CPU usage alert, and it takes me right to the graph, and it tells me when this happened, right, which is quite handy. So combining the two is also cool. And this is set really low, so it won't show you, but usually you see like a line in the graph. Uh, let's see this month. Yeah, so you can see here is when the error happened and when it started kicking off. So you can see exactly when things happen. So yes, I would 
venture to say I use both. So I use Prometheus alerting quite heavily as well as Grafana for the best of both worlds. Bravo, emoji clap. Um, so <laughs> it looks like we're coming to round wrapping up. Um, and so unless you had more to say or more questions come in right now, um, I'm going to wrap it. Oh, okay. Well, can we take it? Is every, do you have time for another question, Brian? Sure. Okay. I currently use stack driver in my team. Will you advise the switch to Prometheus or Grafana? Ooh, I, I don't know stack driver, so I'd have to look it up, but of course, I mean, I'm like Grafana native from Prometheus native. So I, I try to start with these tools first and then, if it doesn't work, go from there. So I, I would recommend Prometheus Grafana. There's a lot of great documentation out there, some great starters. For example, the, the one I showed you earlier, if you just want to get up and running with uh, Prometheus, I made it so easy, you just click a button. You just click this button and you can have it up and running. You can have your whole entire infrastructure running with the click of a button. So I'll drop that in the Slack you can read or into the chat. Thank you, Brian. Thanks for the question. Okay, so here's what happens now is um, we will answer the Q&A on a gist. Um, I will um, create this YouTube video for you and then I will mail you uh, the recording. Um, I also put the community uh, forum link in there um, in the chat box so that you can head over there because I'll also place um, the YouTube video there. And um, just a big note of thanks to Brian and his colleague for providing the background. Um, <laughs> background yeah. details. And, you're, and you're famous now. Yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> nice having you here if from Switzerland and, and the photos were amazing, are amazing. And um, so thank you very much. And thank you to it for attending everyone who registered and, and came today. Um, and if you have any questions, like Brian has said, uh, let us know, find us. We're purely public facing. So um, come skiing in Switzerland. Yeah, come skiing in Switzerland. We do conferences on the summit and it's on. The <laughs> I'm on my way, OMW. Yeah, we're okay. waiting for Mike as well. Oh yeah, let's go with Mike. Okay, everyone, thanks so much. I'm ready to roll. Are, are we good to go? Yep. And then Thank as you, we everyone. do a virtual fist bump. Got that? Fist yeah. bump. <laughs> okay. Good, uh, have a good day. Good night, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.